Hi everyone, my name is Lauren and I'm the CMO here at Spirable, a creative performance platform. So in the second half of this session, I really want to build on what Marie talked you through because data can enhance the creative process in many ways. And I'm going to talk through how you can scale and optimize through relevancy. So, you know, the pandemic has moved even more people online, which means it's even harder to capture attention. And I think this stat sums it up quite nicely. The average person scrolls the height of Mount Everest in a year. You know, there's a hell of a lot of content and really standing out is getting harder than ever. But there's a couple of ways that you can achieve that. And that's through relevancy and, and also being reactive. So this could be in various different ways and, and simple ways. It could be as simple as the relevant day of the week, as you can see in the visual here. You know, it's alluding to Monday or it could be reactive to the local weather, just calling out that it's sunny. Um, or location as well is a big one. So, you know, there's various different ways that you can make your creative relevant um, and reactive in the moment. And of course, what's key at the moment is doing this in a way that's privacy compliant. You know, personalization has come a long way over the years and, you know, gone are the days of, you know, an ad following you around in a creepy way around the internet. And it's really made way for a more privacy compliant way to do that through using first party data and using contextual targets. So, you know, it's all good and well having to create all this really relevant creative, but doing that across all your audiences, across all the formats and placements that are now available can be a real challenge. You know, it's time consuming. It takes a lot of budget. It takes a lot of people and time. And, you know, brands have to weigh up. Is the effort worth the reward? Um, but that's where technology comes in. So creative automation allows you to dynamically create all the different creative variations for all the different audiences, you know, in a matter of minutes. And the way that it achieves that is connecting live and contextual data with dynamic templates and modular assets. And these modular assets are really the key to sort of adapting the creative process to allow it to be dynamic. So that could be, you know, dynamic products, it could be dynamic um, CTA, it could be dynamic video in the background, it could be, you know, dynamic text, the list, list goes on, literally every part of the creative can be dynamic, which ultimately means that it can be adapted in, in real time or near real time. So that's really the key to being, uh, you know, allowing you to create and scale these multiple variations. And, and here's, uh, you know, data-driven creative in action. So it's built from one template, but it's two different audiences. So on the left, you can see it's for London. On the right, it's for Paris. It's dynamically using two different languages. It's bringing in dynamic UV levels. And because of the different UV levels, it's then recommending different products based on those different levels. So it's completely tailored to the audience that's seeing it at that time, at that location, at that city. So, you know, it really shows how you're, you know, simply uh, able to create that tens, hundreds, thousands of different creatives from that one template, really saving time um, and money. So here are some examples of the different data triggers that you can use. So it could be anything from audience targeting, like uh, behavior or preferences or interests through the social channels, contextual data, which I showed you previously, you know, like time and day or weather, um, or even live data. Um, it could be sports scores or sports odds or stock levels. So it can be really reactive and in the moment, you know, you could, there could be a Real Madrid versus Barcelona on at the local pub at 8 p.m. and you want to direct people to that pub. So you can bring in those live sports scores, you can direct direct people to their local pub and it's really engaging, really useful and really in the moment advertising. And that's what's going to stand out, especially, you know, at a time where being reactive and things are changing all the time, having that ability to be agile is, is really important. And then lastly, there's CRM data. And this is more for the email or Facebook messenger execution, where you're sort of building that one-to-one -one conversation um, with your audience. 
So Aldi is a great example of using data in a really creative way. So they tapped into their store uh, store location and store time data to really educate people on the quietest times to shop. So of course, during the pandemic, when people wanted to socially distance, this was a great way to help send that message um, and help them shop, shop safer. Um, so on the on the left hand side is an example, um, you know, Coventry, it's bringing in the local store, and then you can see it's quietest between 7 and 10pm. Um, and again, the same template, but it's tapping into a different location and different store time. So really dynamically using that data in a really, really useful way to help people shop safely. Um, and again, you can see a lot of scale here, it was eight, you know, 890 um, targeted stores and over 3400 assets just from that one template. Deutsche Bahn is another great example of really data driven creativity. So um, with this one, they com compared um, the destinations overseas, which were very expensive, nearly 2000 euros, and they compared that to um, equally beautiful destinations in Germany that cost only 19 euro with traveling with Deutsche Bahn. So it's a great way to bring in dynamic flight prices and compare that to the price of getting the train somewhere in Germany in this example. And as you can see, won lots of awards. It was a really creative execution and it, and it drove really solid results, 24% uh, in, increase, percent increase in revenue, um, et cetera. So again, another great example of how data can really drive creativity. And you know, taking data-driven creative then to the next level um, is what we call, in a way, called creative intelligence. So this is the ability to not only understand your creative, but also understand why it was impactful and then take action. And you know, this uses computer vision technology to understand various different stimuli within the creative. So it could be the visual assets, the motion analysis, you know, the memorability, but the really important part here is actually plotting it against an attention curve. And this is a predictive attention curve. So you can sort of think of this as your sort of creative concierge or your sort of art director that sits on, sits on your shoulder. It's really there to help you make the right decisions based on data. So it really reduces the guesswork because you've got all these data-driven insights that are helping you create the best creative before it's even gone out the door. And here is an example of, of what we did with Aldi. So this is their sort of creative broken out scene by scene at the bottom. And what we found was actually when the basket of items were shown, the attention curve or the predictive attention curve really dropped at that point, which was a bit of a surprise to Aldi because they thought the basket was really the cen center of the ad and the really most important part. So it just, just goes to show, you know, you do need those data-driven insights to sort of challenge you and sort of remove that bias because it, you know, it creeps into any creative process. So it's having that ability to have, you know, these insight, insights um, at your fingertips, and then you can make the decisions about what's best. And it also allows you to, you know, refocus on the strategy and, and everything else that's important and let the data do some of the grunt work. Um, so what we did with Aldi, the original ad is on the left hand side, which has the basket in it. So what we did was from those insights that we got, we've created a few other variations. And the one where the basket was removed actually outperformed the, the original ad by I think it was 7% increase in click through rate. So, you know, it really goes to show that, um, you know, really using those data driven insights can have an increase um, in your performance and in those business outcomes. And I think, you know, one of the key takeaways takeaways here is that, you know, data, automation and AI um, are really shaking up the creative process. Um, and we're only really scratching the surface on what it can offer. And I think those that can adapt uh, will find that their creativity is only enhanced um, by the power of technology. So thank you very much, everyone. And please get in touch with uh, myself or Marie after this, if you'd like to learn more.